Hello and welcome to the Pastor's Corner. Today we will look at Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 from the English Standard Version. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Paul is concerned for the Philippian church because there is a lack of unity and some false teaching that has entered the church. And this is the reason that Paul encourages them to work together and stand firm together in one spirit, having the same purpose, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel of Jesus Christ against the enemies of Christ, whether they be outside the church or within the church. And this should be also our goal as well as a church. Maintaining the truth of the gospel and at the same time maintaining unity as a church is very difficult to achieve. In fact, historically, it's been impossible to achieve. The church has either moved toward unity, which was the position of the Catholic Church during the Reformation period, or toward the truth of the gospel, which is why many new denominations have been, had been formed and continue to be formed. But as a church, we should strive with the wisdom of God to maintain both unity and also the truth of the gospel. Now in chapter 2, Paul explains how to maintain both unity and also the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The key to maintaining both of these seemingly impossible goals is humility. And as Paul moves to a discussion of humility later, he mentions spiritual realities that, that should help us maintain our unity. But first, the words translated English as so if are better understood to be therefore since. If causes the reader to think that there is a condition, but there is no condition. Through being part of Christ's body, the church, we have been given the encouragement in Christ, the comfort for love, the participation in the spirit, and affection and sympathy. The first reality related to humility is encouragement in Christ. The Greek word here could also be translated exhortation. Jesus prayed for us that we, his church, would be one in John 17, 21, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This is his desire and the desire of God the Father. He encourages us and exhorts us to be one, even as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit are one. The second reality is comfort from love. The Greek word translated comfort is better understood as incentive or appeal. Christ loved his church so much that he died for her. John states, by this we know, love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Christ has poured out his love to us, and he urges us or appeals to us to love our brothers and sisters by putting their needs before our own. The third reality is participation or fellowship in the Spirit. Every believer in Christ has received the Holy Spirit, which is the evidence that we belong to Christ. And since we have all received the Spirit, we should be unified as one body with one purpose. For a one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. The last reality that Paul mentions is any affection and sympathy. These two words should be taken together as a deep, inward compassion for our brothers and sisters. And when these four spiritual realities are combined with humility, they lead to a deep love and compassion for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and a deep desire to be of one mind and one heart, working together to build each other up so that we will all reach the full measure of Christ and proclaim Christ to those around us so that they will be snatched out of the clutches of Satan and become citizens of the kingdom of God. Let me restate verses 1 and 2 in my own words because they were powerful verses for us as a church to remember and live by. Therefore, since Christ has exhorted you 
to be unified, urged you by his love, given you the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who makes his body one, given you a deep love and compassion for your brothers and sisters in Christ, complete the joy of Christ our Lord and King by being of the same mind, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in purpose. Let us pray. And I pray that these words might just touch our hearts, Lord God, that we might live by your love, Lord God, that we might have the unity that you so much prayed for when you were on this earth and desire for us to have, that we might have a deep compassion and love for our brothers and sisters in Christ in our church, and that through the Spirit who makes us one and through which we and through whom we have fellowship that we might be one and we might do all we can to make sure that our church which is led by you will be one in Jesus Christ's name we pray amen